Amen. Amen. There are some old things that they, that need to pass away. Amen. 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 There are some old things that need to pass away. There's some old conversations that don't need to be brought up no more. Yeah, yeah. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. In this brief moment, I, I want to, to talk about it being for his glory. Amen. Amen. And I want to say to my neighbors that are in here, one of the reasons why you need to let old things pass away so that God can be glorified. Yes. He can't be glorified in your past. He can't be glorified in those things that are hurting you still because you're holding on to it. Let it go so God can be glorified. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I got a million dollars in my hand. Amen. Amen. This was given to me. The man said to me, just put a million dollars on the table. I said, but I said, if I did, we both would be in good position. He said, well, I want to give you a million dollars. And he put a million dollars down. He said, I want the change. <laughs> so I grabbed a hold of that. I said, man, I said, can I keep this? He said, this is for you. I'm literally giving you a million dollars. Now, what you do with it is your choice. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, this right here is not an actual million dollar bill. But it would be if this was true currency. Amen. There are some of us who have received some fake things in our lives trying to make some real decisions. <laughs> Can you witness? Amen. There are some old things in our life that are no longer relevant. Amen. They have to let it go. Amen. Giving on to God first and foremost, my brothers and sisters, I thank God for, for all of you. Amen. Our ministers, our deacons body of Christ. I want to encourage you today. Amen. In order for you to receive this, you've got to put everything to the side. All right. And let us hear what God is saying in his word. Amen. To these ushers, I thank God for you. Amen. 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 Very briefly, I want you to turn from Matthew chapter 6. I want you to go to, I mean, uh, turn from Matthew chapter 6. Romans. From Romans chapter 6. Amen. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 25. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. And I won't be before you long today. I mean that. Amen. <laughs> Matthew chapter five, 25. And let's look at verse 14. Amen. Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at verse 14. The scripture says, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who would call his own servant and deliver unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several abilities. Straightway he took his journey. Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them over five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained another two. But he that received one rent, went and dig in the earth and hid of his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. So he that had received five talents came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, I have delivered unto, thou hast delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou hast delivered unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown, and 
gathering where thou hast not straw. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reapeth where I soweth not, gathered where I have not straw. Thou hast therefore had put my money into the exchanges, and then let, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take that therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which had ten. For thou, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he had. And cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there shall be gnashing, weeping and gnashing of teeth. This story, this story, uh, is a rich story. And I want to tell you what I get out of this story. God wants you to manage what he has given you. It's for his glory. It's for his glory. When you think about all that God has placed in your life, it's for his glory. The children that you have, you didn't create them. He gave them to you. They're for his glory. We make a lot of decisions in life based on what we think we have. But what if what you were given with faith? What can you do with faith money? What can you do with faith opportunities? What can you do with faux materials? There's nothing you can do. But God has given you the best of what he has to offer. And I want you to understand what the scripture is pointing out here is that God wants to use what you got for his glory. Every person is born with talents and gifts. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Are you discovering and developing how it can be magnified? How it can glorify God? Or have you stored it in the closet somewhere? Is it only in you? Have you allowed it to affect other people? Many of us, the things that God has blessed us with, we buried it. We buried it in ourselves. It's only what we do. It's only what we know. It's only what we think of. And it doesn't get any farther than you. Part of exchange is being able to branch out and being able to reach others besides yourself. This is where I want you to find the, 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 the hope because God is still looking at your lives. And he's expecting what he's given you to be fruitful, to flourish, to become what he had purposed it for you. God is hard. He blesses and he punishes. One of the reasons why we see disaster come so close to us because God allows his power to be seen. More folk put more energy into being scared than they are to being saved. I want to encourage you today to understand that these words isn't just about your finances. This word is about your life. God has given you this life, and he expects this life to give him a return. Yeah. Many of us are living uh, hard. We're living hard, and, and, and the choices that we make is hard. Everything that, that we are doing is not encouraging us to be smart or wise. We're living hard. Many of us, we don't want to come across as being weak. But in our weakness, God said that he's strong. Amen. It's important that we understand that it is for his glory. Jesus Christ was created to be the savior of the world. A little child, born in a manger. Innocent, weak, vulnerable. But yet, the life that was given unto him was for the purpose of saving every life. Weak, vulnerable. Every life. Go through ups and downs and challenges. This is not the end. This is only a part of the process. So when you have your bad days, don't forget, 
God wants his return. His return is that he would be glorified. I want you to understand.